But the real testament to a business is over time, creating a customer over time who comes back again and again. So if you can do those small things, they're always going to turn to you. They're like, oh, I got to go do this thing. I need a pet sitter. I'm going to go straight to the person I know is going to tell me what's going on. They're going to show me the picture. They're going to do the small things that make me want to come back and, you know, make sure my animal is okay. Welcome to the Wear Wag Repeat Podcast. I'm Tori Mystic. As a dog mom lifestyle expert, blogger, and business owner, I love talking to other women in the pet industry and sharing their advice with you every week. Sit, stay, and listen to the latest episode. On this episode, I am talking with Cassidy Lemaire, the owner of a pet care and dog walking service in Southern California. Cassidy is passionate about providing personalized care to her furry clients, and she talked to me about why she loves working one-on-one. We also talk about the importance of building trust with clients. As a dog walker and sitter, you're going into people's homes, you're around their families, and you're spending a lot of time with their beloved pets. Cassidy focuses on attention to detail and transparently communicating with pet parents. That also comes into play when it comes to pricing. Rising gas prices and inflation are affecting a lot of pet care providers these days. Cassidy told me how she can cut back on her expenses to get a better profit margin. When she does need to raise prices, she offers more options to her clients so they can feel like we're all in this together, which we are. I hope you enjoyed this conversation. Make sure to listen to the end for stories about Cassidy's own dogs. They sound so cute. And a teaser for next week's episode. We're going to be talking about Super Zoo. It is coming up next month and I can't wait. If you enjoy this episode, please take a moment to rate and review on Apple Podcasts. This is easiest from your phone in the Apple Podcasts app. For some reason, doing it on the computer is just not very self-explanatory. So open up the Apple Podcasts app on your iPhone or iPad device and find the Wear Wag Repeat podcast. And if you love the show, give me a five-star review and write a little message about what you love about the show. I love reading reviews and they also help me get the show out to more people. Lately, I have had really high download numbers and I want to keep it going so that we can get these episodes out to more people who dream of working with pets. Cassidy Lemaire started her business, Cassidy's Custom Pet Services, in 2019 to provide in-home pet care and dog walking to clients in the Temecula and Marietta areas of Southern California. She was raised by an entrepreneur and grew up falling in love with the mechanics of operating a business. While earning her business degree, Cassidy spent years figuring out what her business could look like. She realized that her side gigs during and after college all revolved around pets. She also spent her free time learning about animals and using all that information to care for her own pets. Sharing that knowledge with her community became the niche that she carved out for herself, and the business has grown beyond her wildest imagination. Now, Cassidy's Custom Pet Services helps support over 100 animals and their families by regularly providing enriching in-home pet care services. Hi, Cassidy. Hello. Welcome to the podcast. Yeah, thank you for having me today. Yeah, I'm excited to have you on here. Um, And I asked your permission to share this little story (laughs) with everyone Um, because you you reached out and emailed me um, after I had an episode. It was episode 209, if anyone wants to go back and find it. I'm I'm pretty sure um, where I talked about how I decided not to start a pet care services business this year. Back in January, I was like, sure. I was a thousand percent sure that I was going to start a new business, um, or kind of like a new arm of my current business. Mm -hmm. Uh, and 
then after talking about it to myself on the podcast and everyone listening and getting everyone's feedback and thinking, I decided not to. Um, And my reasoning was that I felt like with my blog and everything that if I could focus and spend more effort putting out consistent blog posts, that I could reach more people and make more of an impact. And what I love about our world is that everyone has different perspectives. um, And I love being able to bring people on the show who have different perspectives because there's so many different ways to to do things um, and and to make an impact. Um, And so you had reached out to me and said that um, you thought you found that kind of my reasoning to be interesting Mm -hmm. because you feel like you can make more of an impact by going into a home and really focusing on one animal, their family and their specific questions and needs. uh, And it just feels more impactful that way to you. Um, So I guess if you want to, if you could kind of like share a little bit about that, why you feel like that's um, your calling versus, um, doing it another way. Yeah. I think on a personal level, I've always kind of felt that way. Like I'm more impactful if I'm having a one-on-one, um, minute with someone and can really engage on a topic fully. And when I started thinking about, okay, what does pet care look like? What is starting this business look like? I chose in home one-on-one, because it had the same feeling to me. I could go and I could sit with them and I could answer their questions and I could dive in to those needs or even on a walk, I could spend the time helping that specific, you know, dog really engage with the environment and do what they needed to do to feel the most satisfied where I didn't get that same thing when I, if I was doing, you know, different houses, different walks, more animals, I couldn't really engage as much. And I wanted that more one-on-one feeling. That's where I felt most successful. That's where I felt the dog was most successful or the cat or any animal we're working with, um, as well as the family too. And I could really engage fully. And, 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 you know, I spend a lot of time with these houses. I, you know, I've had some of my clients since before I started the business. So like four or five years that I've spent with them in their houses and just going through it all. And I think I've gotten that far from doing the one-on-one sessions and really engaging in that relationship with them. Yeah. I mean, it really comes down to kind of building trust with people. And I know that's something that's really important with you. Um, So I guess, how do you, how do you, some of these clients you've had for four or five years or, Mm -hmm. or, or three years or whatever, but I'm sure you get new inquiries all the time. And so how do you, kind of, um, go about building that trust with a new client. Yeah. Trust is the number one, I would say barrier to this specific in-home care side of the industry. And when I was first, you know, talking to neighbors, talking to family and people about their experiences with pet sitters and what they were looking for and what they'd gone through, especially when I was first getting those initial clients, so many had said, you know, I came home and my animal just wasn't fed. Like I still had the same amount of food. The house wasn't touched. Like it was so concerning to them and it had turned them off of doing this type of care. And so when I started really putting together my business, that became our number one thing was we've got to jump that hurdle. That's the really number one thing we have to engage in and make sure people have with us is trust. So they're not even thinking about, oh, what's going wrong at the house right now? Um, And so the biggest way we've been able to do that is transparency. You know, from our meet and greet to every service that we do, we tell people exactly what we're doing. You know, from the moment we arrive, we send a picture letting them know we're there. Those things on a technical level, they're timed, they're, you know, they're dated and they're in a message form. Um, and so people always have access to it. They see, you know, oh, they're actually in my house. They're with my dog. And then when we leave, we do the same thing. We let them know we're leaving for the day. We're out. This is exactly what happened. Um, putting in, you know, maybe something small that happened between us and the animal, something fun we did. If anything happened, uh, we put that all out there for them to see. So there's never a question of whether we arrived or not. There's never a question of when we left or what we did when we were there. 
so they can continue to build that with us every time. And with the clients I've had for five years to the clients I've had for a month, we do that same exact process. We never let up on it because it does create trust. It creates transparency. And in turn, that creates them relying on us to continue to show up and do the same thing we've always done. Yeah. Well, and I also think that just with the way, um, you know, the, the pet parent culture that has evolved over the years that people want that, you know, their dog needs to go to the bathroom or take mm-hmm. a walk or eat or whatever. That's a need. But I think the parents also want to get those constant updates. Um, mm-hmm. and like, I mean, we're all, we're helicopter parents. We all are. <laughs> and, and they probably, you know, that's, that adds a lot of value and it takes two seconds. Oh yeah. Pictures in general are just the number one thing people want. And it's not even something people think to ask in a meet and greet. But we always put that up front. Like we'll take a picture as soon as we arrive to show you we're here and people go, oh, really? That's great. Like, thank you so much. I want a picture halfway through my day to like pick me up and it's my dog. Um, And then you're also informing me about what's going on with them. And we get people too who go out of country. So they're in Greece, they're wherever. And that's kind of nerve wracking, you know, like you're completely out of the country and you have no clue what's going on. Yes. So you really need that picture. Like you really need to know, okay, they're actually at the house. Like they're not just texting me and saying they're here. They're there. I got the picture. I have all the information. Yes. Cause there's nothing they can do. You know, they're all the way in a different country. Oh my gosh. For my 30th birthday, um, one of my friends, I think she was also turning 30 and, um, we, there was a direct flight on this like budget, horrible airline <laughs> to Paris, France. And we decided we're going to do this for our birthdays. And, um, it was in January, which I don't know, give or take I don't know if that means anything, but, um, I, my, all my regular dog sitters who would stay with my dogs were unavailable, mm-hmm. um, or, you know, someone had committed and they, something, they broke their foot or something and they canceled. And it was just every, everything was going wrong and I could not get anyone. And so I finally, finally found someone who would agree to stay at my house with the dogs for like the five days or whatever that I was gone out of the country, you know, Mm -hmm. it's your different time zone. So it's just like stressful. Um, and she, uh, worked at a daycare where one of my friends took his dog and he is very neurotic about his dog. So I was like, okay, I'm sure she's good. Cause she's de- she did some transport for his dog. And I was like, I think she'll be fine. That entire trip. She did not send me a single picture. And I was like really stressed. I mean, I was like, my mind was just going, I was like, am I going to come home to like a murder scene or something? Like what's going to happen? Like, I was just so stressed about the whole thing. And, um, I don't know if you can hear Lucy barking in the background, but, um, <laughs> She's stressed too. No, <laughs> <laughs> she's feeling the story. She Just knows hearing about it. She's like, Oh my God, I hated that week. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's those little things like the picture. Oh my gosh. It makes mm-hmm. such a difference. It makes all the difference in the world. And people tell me like, Oh my gosh, that just, I'm so happy we have this. And now we have an actual like app system that we use before it was texting, but people have even more access to profiles now with our software and what app do you use? We use pet pocketbook. Yeah. I've heard good things about that. Yeah. There's, and there's such a good company to work with. It's been a great experience, but it's even more accessibility. Now people can see everything from top to bottom in their profile, put their own information in. So even if they are gone and they were like, Oh, I need to update. I didn't put, you know, X, Y, or Z on our list or whatever, they can go straight to the profile. Just so it's even more accessibility and to us while we're in their home. And the, the other part with the trust isn't just the animals. It's the fact that we're in people's homes and we right. work with a lot of families. So that became a huge priority for us as well was, okay, it's one thing to take care of their animals, but we have access to their homes. Like we're sleeping here. We have to take care of it. And we have to make sure they know that their house is taken care of. And, you know, even if it's as simple as like, I'm going to bring in the package from out front so it doesn't get stolen, adds levels of safety. And it's those little small things that really build trust and reliability with a client over time. Yeah. Or just running the Swiffer. So there's not like tumbleweeds of dog hair Mm -hmm. when they walk in the door. (laughs) Making sure the little robot vacuum does what it needs to do. Right. Yeah. 
um, like a little bit more over here. Yeah. Um, so I love that. And, and I love, um, just, it sounds like you have such a system kind of down pat and, it, and it, it kind of does come down to that, like attention to detail mm-hmm. with people, um, and just making sure to keep it up and don't let it fall through the cracks. Yeah. Yeah. And making sure to like, even if you know, you're doing something, so say an animal's on medication or there's just like some little small thing that all of our animals have a little neurotic thing that they do that we're like, okay, keep an eye on that. Cause it means this we will mention that. Like I did do the medication this morning. I did get them their wet food. I did make sure that this happened. You know, you're doing it, but the other person has no idea if you followed through on the instructions you gave them. And even if it feels repetitive, making sure they know, like, they got their medication this morning, they ate all their food, they've been going to the bathroom, which are all signs of, you know, if they're not going to the bathroom, if they're not eating, if they're not doing those typical things, stress or having a Mm -hmm. hard time. So even just engaging and saying they are doing those things, we're making sure they're getting their food, we're making sure they're going to the bathroom it creates a relaxation because I'm a pet parent too. Like I've gone away and had to leave my animals with, with someone that I wasn't maybe as familiar with because a family member wasn't available and it's stressful. You're like, I'm all the way in a different place. I'm eight hours away. I'm this far away. And you're like, I just want to make sure that little thing got done. Please tell me that little thing got done. (laughs) Yeah. Well, and I love, I just wanted to call out like how you said, you know, you know that you did it, but your Mm -hmm. client doesn't know that you did it. And I think for people listening, that applies to like any job, <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, any job where you're dealing with clients or something, um, you might know that you're working on it or that you're editing their photos or whatever it is that you got to do. But sending that little update makes a huge difference in just having people feel comfortable with what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And that's what creates a relationship because mm-hmm. we can all have a, a one-off client come and use our services or buy our product. But the real testament to a business is over time, creating a customer over time who comes back again and again. So if you can do those small things, they're always going to turn to you. They're like, oh, I got to go do this thing. I need a pet sitter. I'm going to go straight to the person I know is going to tell me what's going on. They're going to show me the picture. They're going to do the small things that make me want to come back and, you know, make sure my animal is okay. Yeah. Um, if we can shift gears here a little bit Mm -hmm. to a new topic, um, but kind of related, you know, I think doing all of these, um, details and all the touch points and working one-on-one, it takes time and it takes effort and you need a person who is really capable to do those things. And that can be expensive. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, right now we cannot avoid, you know, it seems like there's always a new crisis and right now it's just inflation and everything is so expensive. Mm -hmm. And as a, you know, a pet sitter or, um, a dog walker or people who have to travel around, you got to pay for gas. Everything is just so expensive. Um, and I think pet parents are feeling that as well. You know, dog food is getting more expensive Mm -hmm. from a lot of brands and, um, there's just, uh, there's a lot for people. It's a lot. Um, so, so I know that it's important to you to kind of balance affordability with value. Um, and how, how do you do that? How do you figure that out? Uh, affordability and in, in creating access to these kinds of uh, services, which can feel a little luxurious, can feel like it's not really meant for the everyday person, um, has always been a part of the business model. And like me, that was one of my things because people would tell me like, I didn't even know this was an option for someone kind of in my position. And it makes me feel so much better to have this as an option than, you know, the other things I've done in the past, whether it was just not great pet sitting or having to do doggy daycare, but my dog doesn't actually like to go to doggy daycare, but it was the only option I had. Um, So this can feel a little luxurious. So it was always in the mix and, and cutting my own expenses on the business side, making sure that I am creating quality care, but also not having unnecessary expenses as a business um, has always been kind of in the fold, which helps create a more affordable thing because you can still make money without, you know, if you're having those lower expenses, you can still make the money at a bit more of an affordable price. 
Um, but the other side of it is creating options. Now, I definitely haven't been able to escape the price raise, especially with everything going on. That's just where we're at. And I've been lucky enough to cultivate a client list that understands that and is totally okay with it (laughs) Um, and, and really wants to help me because they still want the service. But what we've really had to focus on in this last little bit is creating options for people. So if I am making a price raise on something, giving someone a different option, you know, here's our hour service had to go up, but I'm going to change our additional hour service, or I'm going to change our, I'm going to give you another 30 minute option um, that I know is going to work for both of us. I'm still going to make money and you're still going to get some of the care that you need because people do have different needs. There the people who want the longer, higher price services, they're going to keep getting those. Um, but the people who are looking, who, who maybe have animals that can go a little bit longer or don't need as long of a service, they're going to start looking for those other options, which is what we've been able to provide for them. And it still creates accessibility to us and our services. Um, and we also don't have the a lot of like additional fees. So I don't have like a late fee if you book the day before. If I can do it, I can do it. And that's on me to say yes or no, um, which has really been a big one because of everything that's been going on in the last couple of years, people have a lot of last minute things happening Sure, things that they have no clue are going to happen the day before. And we've been able to really build on our relationship because I've been there for them at the last minute, you know, people whose parents are ending up in the hospital, people who are ending up in the hospital themselves, people who are just overwhelmed with going back to school with their kids. Cause everything is kind of like in our school getting mode. canceled randomly at random days. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just things that no one's really in control of. So we took away late fees. We aren't doing that so that people feel like they can come to us and they're not going to get just hit with this overwhelming price at the end of their service that they're like, well, I didn't, I I can't come to you and now I can't do this and I can't get my dog taken care of, but I have to go do this. And they're kind of stuck going, Oh, Um, which has created more of a reliability on our end too. people feel like I can go ask her and I'm not, I'm either she's going to say yes or no. And then if she does say yes, I'm not going to get smacked in the face with just an overwhelming price. Well, that's just such a great way to kind of, and it goes back to like the transparency that you were talking about earlier Mm -hmm. and just telling people like, we do have to raise some prices, but we're being creative. We're work mm-hmm. with us here. You know, it's a partnership is mm-hmm. really what you're creating with people. Um, and I think that probably leads to a lot of loyalty um, with your customers. Mm-hmm. It has. And I've been so grateful and blessed for it <laughs> to have clients who, you know, see that we're trying really hard to work with them. We're trying to be understanding, but also having them be understanding back and say, I get it. Like we're all in the same position because that's where my mindset goes to is as much as I'm getting hit with gas prices. So are my clients like mm-hmm. they travel for work too. That's, you know, a lot of our business is midday drop-ins because everyone's working and back in their office now, like we're all getting hit with the same stuff. So I try to keep it as reasonable as possible because we're all in it. We're all in it together. We're all trying to make it through and survive and like deal with these different price raisings. Um, and so we really try and infuse that into our relationships with them, just understanding and being that, that having that flexibility in everything we do yeah. and knowing our boundaries, of course, but still being able to give where we can give. Yeah, exactly. I was um, talking to someone recently about, I was like, oh, I don't know if I uh, feel comfortable charging this for that or whatever. And they were like, well, that person's an adult. Uh, they can make a decision for themselves if it's right for them or not. And mm-hmm. so it's the same thing. Like if someone, if a client comes to you, can you walk my dog tomorrow? Um, you can, you're an adult and you can make a decision mm-hmm. <laughs> if it works for you or not. And it's fine. Yeah. And that's one of the transparency aspects we have from the beginning of the meet and greet on everything I have. It says it has the asterisks of we are on a first come first serve basis. If we don't have the availability, we don't have it. And during our meet and greets, I always tell my clients, you can ask me, you can ask me the day before you can ask me the day of, and that's fine. But just understand that if I don't have it available, I don't have it available. 
And the more time you give me to make an appointment, the more likely you are to get it. But I do understand that life happens and that you still need help on those days. So please reach out and ask, but just know that I may say no. There's right. no guarantee in any of our like bookings, but feel free to reach out because, you know, you never know. I might have an afternoon open and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> let's yeah. go on a walk. When you want to be the person who's there, who's available, you know, so they feel comfortable, like ask me anything. Mm-hmm. Um, Cause I'm sure there's a lot of topics that you know about when it comes to pets. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of in the time that we have left, I want to hear about your own pets. Um, Cause you have two wonderful dogs. Mm-hmm. And um, if you could just tell us who they are and how they came into your life. Yes. So I have two baby girls. <laughs> I have Dakota's my first dog and she, I've been, I've worked with animals my entire life, but she was like the first, my, uh, as an adult human, I went and got her and she is mine and no one else's. Um, and I actually chose both of my dogs for the same reason. They fall asleep in my arms when I pick them up and it was just like, okay, well, I guess I can't put her down now. We're just here. <laughs> Um, but Dakota, she's been the one that has taught me so much about patience and just the, you know, I got them at three months old. So that's a lot of patience, those puppy years mm-hmm. <laughs> and a lot about how, and you hear trainers say it all the time where you have to adjust your thinking, you know, they don't speak our language. They're the ones trying to learn and understand. And there were so many times where. I would get frustrated or overwhelmed. Why aren't you doing this thing? Why isn't this thing happening? And it'd be like, well, maybe because you're teaching it to her wrong. So there was a lot of adjustment and learning like, oh, I need to shift my perspective a little bit because there's something I'm missing to teach her. So she, she gave me a lot of that. And she's been like my adventure dog. She's the one who could just get along with everybody. So she goes with me everywhere. <laughs> um, and she's my little buddy. And then three and she's, years ago, she's a Rhodesian Ridgeback, right? Yes. She's yeah. a Rhodesian Ridgeback mix, um, which is just such a wonderful breed. I've met so, so many Rhodesian Ridgebacks lately too, in our community. Um, and they've just all got that same temperament. So smart. She picks everything up too quick, <laughs> um, opens doors. She's a funny girl. But, and then my other dog, Sage, she was actually originally not my dog. She was my mother's dog and then became mine. And I was like, I'm going to take her now. I'm going to need you. this. <laughs> <laughs> she is mine. Thanks for playing. I'm so glad you caught her. <laughs> um, but she was a different lesson in a different way. She, my dogs love each other to death, but they're very different in personality. She's a lot more stubborn, less likely to listen. And she has a much harder time with people. And she she really went through, both of them were rescues. Both of them had been abused in their previous homes, but she really got, you know, she got the ring of it um, before she came to us. And it it really hit her in a very defensive way. We couldn't, her first walk, she was scared of absolutely everything. Just like leaves blowing by us would make her panic. So she took a lot of kind of, changing a mindset in a different way and understanding that they all have a different approach, you know, and I, I've got to kind of shift between them and how they hear me and how they take things. Um, she's the sweetest peach in the world. She loved like when she loves you, when she gets to know you, she's that dog that will just lay on your face and like give no personal space. <laughs> um, but she definitely has taken a lot of work and like, just getting her to a place of like, I can go talk to people and I can be out in the world and, and really giving that space and time for her. Yeah. Well, I love how they're such individuals. Mm -hmm. So different from each other. They absolutely love each other and they look like they're related. I don't know how that happened (laughs) (laughs) because, because they're meant to be like, that's with my dogs. People always ask me always like five times a day, are they siblings? Mm-hmm. And, and I'm like, no. Uh, but then I don't know, people give me like a dirty look when I say no, cause they just like <laughs> want them to be siblings so badly. Um, but I believe my dogs are soulmates because mm-hmm. they just like are meant to be together. Like soulmates doesn't have to be romantic. Like they're just meant to be together. And it sounds like your dogs too. 
Oh yeah. They are so meant to be in each other's lives. And I was kind of nervous when I first took on Sage, just because my dog had been the only dog for like six years and she was so used to all the attention. And I was like, okay, what's the dynamic change going to be here? Like, is she going to be okay with this or not? And they just fell in love with each other instantly, which I was very grateful for because it can take time when they're first adjusting to each other. Um, especially rescues, but we were grateful enough to have them just get along from the beginning. And people always ask, cause my older one's seven and the other one's three. So people always ask, is that her puppy? Like, is mm-hmm. that her baby? And like, nah, sorry to disappoint you. No, I know <laughs> people get very disappointed. <laughs> yeah. Like, Oh, okay. <laughs> So funny. Um, well, Cassidy, it's been so much fun talking to you. I love hearing about your business and it just, you put so much care into everything that you do. Um, so where can people find you and learn more about you online? Yeah. So we are mainly on Instagram and Facebook at Cassidy's custom pet services. Um, and that's where we're most active. You can talk to us through there as well. We're always on there. Cool. Well, everybody reach out to Cassidy and say hi. And um, thank you again for um, sharing your time and your expertise with us. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for having me on. I was so excited to do this. (laughs) What did you like most about this episode? Find me on Instagram at teamistic and let me know what intrigued you or what questions you have about starting or growing your own dog inspired business. You can also screenshot this episode and tag me in your stories. I love to see who is listening out there. Some of the best conversations happen after the episode, right? So track me down over on Instagram or join the Wear, Wag, Repeat Labs Facebook group to connect with other dog-obsessed entrepreneurs. And as always, you can find all the links and resources discussed in this episode at wearwagrepeat.com slash podcast. See you back here next week.